Hi, in this screencast we're going to learn how to name ions based on their charge and um, how some of the elements in the periodic table have an automatic charge and what they are. Let's start with what is an ion. An ion is an element that has either gained or lost its electrons to form an ion. So you can have, um, for instance, an A typically becomes a plus one ion, which means that it has lost an electron, because remember, electrons are negative. So if we've lost one of these out of our sodium atom, we're left with an unequal balance of charges, which means we have an additional proton that's not balanced out, so our overall charge would be plus one. And ions formed on a single atom are known as monatomic. So if you think back to your biology um, prefixes, mono meaning one, so a monatomic ion means that it's one element forming a charge. For example, um, most of the elements want to become a noble gas configuration. So nitrogen will gain three electrons to become minus three. If we have three extra negatives, the overall balance of charges leaves you in a minus three state. So the charge is referenced as the oxidation state. You'll see these two words used interchangeably. And the oxidation state of an ion depends on the number of valence electrons. And what you're looking for is um, elements want to have a noble gas, which would be eight in their outer energy level, but they have either gained or lost electrons depending on how they're shared and what, they're, what ions they're forming. Looking at the periodic table, um, you can determine the valence electrons for any element depending on what column they're in on the periodic table. The valence electrons are the energy, um, the electrons in the outermost energy level, and these are the ones that are free to be gained, lost, or shared in bonds. And so depending on um, what column the in the periodic table the element is in is um, what is its charge. So the, it says the electrons located in the outer energy level are the number of valence electrons, also known as the group number, 1a through 8a. So 1a is here, 2a, and then you skip this entire section here. We're going to not be able to identify the charges in there. We go on to 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, 8a. So what that is telling me is that there is one valence here, two here, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you will be able to determine the number of valence electrons in any of the elements that are in those particular columns. Remember, we are not going to be able to determine the valence electrons for this area or this area simply by looking at its placement in the periodic table. Um, there are additional factors in play in the transition metals and the inner transition metals. So knowing that the number of valence electrons or the electrons that can be gained or lost, um, typically you have a pattern of charges for the monatomic ions. So the first column will have, um, will gain or lose, let's see, which is it? If we're becoming plus one, we have lost one electron. Uh, the second column will lose two and become plus two. Remember, the variable charges are here in the center, so we do not have a set charge for them. Um, over here is plus three. We have plus or minus four. Then we become minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Okay, so here's what's happening. When you have sodium, it has one valence electron. So would it be easier to lose one electron or would it be easier to gain seven electrons in order to become the octet or the noble gas configuration? And if you look at it and think about it, would it be easier to lose one thing or find seven more? And the answer is it would be easier to lose one. So in this case, Na, becomes plus one. If we come over here to chlorine, which has seven electrons in its outer state or its valence shell, then you can see that it would be much easier to fill with one more dot as opposed to losing seven. So um, chlorine becomes Cl minus one because it is easier to take in one more electron to become eight as opposed to losing seven. And so that's, that's how you can determine what kind of charge uh, each element has depending on what it, where its position is on the periodic table. So you're going to need to memorize these numbers at the top and be able to look at a periodic table and identify what its um, charge is. 
All right, well, depending on whether you have a positive charge or a negative charge is how you name the ion. So when you have a positive charge, cations just use the regular name and then regular name and then add um, the word ion after it. So for instance, you have aluminum ion. Um, if you were looking at Ca plus two, this would be calcium ion. Um, for a negative charge, this is where you change the name to an IDE ending and add ion. So normally this is oxygen, but we change the, um, the ending of oxygen to become oxide. If we were looking at nitrogen, which is minus three, it becomes nitride. Uh, this will be a challenge for some people to figure out where to break the word, but just make sure you add an IDE ending and that you can tell what the name of the element is. This graphic shows some of the most common poly or I'm sorry, monatomic ions. You can see sodium, potassium, you can see calcium, strontium, aluminum. They're all positives. They all have just the regular name, name and then you add the word ion. And then in the bottom section, you can see the negative, the negative charges. You have the negative one, for instance, fluoride and bromide, iodide. You can see oxi oxide and sulfide, nitride and phosphide. Now, when you name a transition metal, so in our periodic table, we have uh, these three sections. And remember, we were not able to identify what the charge is on the center section. Those are the transition metals. And they have multiple different charges because they have variable charges. So in order to identify what the charge is for the transition metals, you have to use Roman numerals. So um, if you are naming, you will never get above typically um, six or seven. So if you think that you need a Roman numeral bigger than five, you should question yourself. So here's the deal. Any of these transition metals, SN, TL, PB, or IN, all will have a Roman numeral to indicate what the charge of the element is in its ion form. So you can have copper in a plus one and copper in a plus two. And what you do is you take the Roman numeral and you indicate the charge value. So you have copper one ion and copper two ions. So by seeing it copper one, that's telling me it's a plus one and copper two is telling me that this is a plus two. So for instance, if we had Fe plus three, we would know that that's iron three, okay? You just tell me the Roman numeral is the charge. This is a graphic that indicates some of the common um, transition metals or elements with more than one charge. You can see iron 2, you can see iron 3, uh, tin 2, tin 4, um, manganese 2, and manganese 3. You can just tell the, the charge is the Roman numeral. A polyatomic ion, if we take the name, a poly is more than one atom with a charge. So these are polyatomic ions. That's groups of several elements grouped together, bonded covalently, and they have a charge on the whole thing. For instance, we have SO4 down here in the picture. SO4 has a minus two on the whole thing, okay? So you have four oxygens bonded to the sulfur, and through the, um, the distribution of electrons, you lose two, ele or I'm sorry, you've gained two extra electrons, so you have an overall charge of negative two. Okay, and if you look at the graphic down here, you can see all the electrons there, the dots, and then these, these bonds are another two dots or two electrons, and the whole picture has, the whole picture has a minus two on the whole graphic. Another um, polyatomic is NH4, and it's a plus one, which means that through the distribution, you've lost one electron. The whole thing is a positive one, and, um, that is shown with just a plus. Now minuses and pluses, if they have a one value, you can drop the one and it can just be shown as just a plus. The same with a minus one can be just shown as a minus. This chart lists several of the most common polyatomic ions. You can see um, sometimes the names kind of match up. You have NO2, 
which is nitrite, and NO3, which is nitrate. You do need to know what is the charge for these polyatomics. Now, there is um, there's a page in the classroom that has probably 40 or 50 different polyatomics on it, but you are only going to need to know 12 of them. Here are the 12 that you're needing to know. You need both the name, the charge, and the symbol. So ammonium is NH4 with a plus. Chlorate is ClO3 with a minus. Hydroxide is OH with a minus. Nitrite is NO2 with a minus. Chromate is CRO4 with a minus 2, and sulfate is SO4 with a minus 2. If we come over to this side, acetate is C2H3O2 with a minus. Sometimes you might see it written as CH3COO with a minus. They've just combined the carbons and the oxygens. Cyanide is CN with a minus. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus. Carbonate is CO3 with a minus 2, sulfate is SO4 minus 2, and phosphate is PO4 minus 3. You need to know the name, the symbol, and the charge. The sooner you learn these, the easier of a time you will have with the rest of this chapter on naming compounds.